Welcome to the Sykes Adobe Historic Farmstead. The adobe house was constructed around 1870 and is one of a few adobe homes in San Diego County from the time. It was the home of Zenas and Eliza Burrell Sykes and their six children. Zenas and Eliza Sykes met in the Bay Area of California and were married in 1853. That's over 160 years ago. Eliza was born in Ohio and moved to California in the 1850s by ship around Cape Horn with her stepfamily. Zenas was from Michigan and moved across the country to California with his three brothers in 1850. After the young couple married, they moved to Santa Clara, California and acquired land to farm. After 20 years there as a successful farmer, they decided to move. So they purchased this 2,400 acre portion of land for $2,500. In terms of value today, his purchase would have been around $46,000. What a deal! This land had once been a part of the former Mexican land grant Rancho San Bernardo. By 1872, the Sykes family moved onto this land with their six children into this large one-room adobe home. Later, the Sykes family added onto their house to more comfortably fit their family and lifestyle. Zenas was the first postmaster for the entire township of Bernardo and the Grange master as well. It was like being the mayor, except his job was to keep all the farmers informed and united on agricultural issues that could affect them. The Sykes family was then known for putting on lively events in this home. Here you can see an uncovered section of the original home showing that it was constructed from adobe bricks. Adobe is usually a mixture of native soil, sand, straw, and water. Unfortunately, in 2007, a fast racing wildfire that originated at Witch Creek, 30 miles away, destroyed most of the house and the surrounding area. The original adobe walls stood tall after the fire. Looking at the exposed wall here in the kitchen, you can tell the home had burned by markings from iron contained in burnt soil. As we look around the kitchen, can you spot some items that you are familiar with and some that are out of place or unknown to you? Some of these kitchen tools may be familiar to you. Perhaps you use a whisk or a spice grinder or a mortar and pestle, but some things probably look out of place. You might be asking yourself, what is that ironing board doing right by the stove? Well, ironing was done right here in the kitchen. That task meant heating the heavy irons over the wood-burning stove. They would heat multiple irons so that when one cooled down, they would switch to another. When we think about our home conveniences today, life here in the 1870s seems tough. This house did not yet have indoor plumbing. In fact, if you needed water for cooking or even to have a cup of tea or coffee, a family member went outside to the hand pump to fill a pot or bucket. The water, which was extracted from below the ground, was stored in a water tank. It was filled by a window. Think about how many kitchen tasks rely on water. Cooking, cleaning, washing dishes, clothes, and people. All the water would have to be brought in from outside by hand. That is why it was so important to live near a water source, like a pond, a spring, or a creek. Over here is the mud room. This door, which leads into the house, is where you would enter the house after working outside. You might have been working in the wheat fields or gardens or just having some fun playing outside. When you came in here, you would need to wash up, again with that water brought in from outside. The sewing machine in this corner tells an interesting story. After the fire and before the adobe was restored, archaeologists had studied the farmhouse. On the old dirt floor in this section, below the floorboards, archaeologists found needles, pins, and buttons that had fallen through the floorboards over the years. That is how we know that the family would sew and mend their clothes right here. We are now entering the sitting room. This is where the Sykes family would gather with friends or neighbors and play and catch up on news from the other farm families or visitors. You can imagine that they would spend cold nights laughing around the fire after a long day of work. Down this hall is a room we now call the children's room. 
The youngest son, Edward Sykes, came with his family when he was only eight years old. At age 18, we know this became his room. By then, most of his siblings married and moved away. Today, the room is an exhibit to showcase the many children's toys that the Sykes children or grandchildren would have played with. We have tops, marbles, and jacks, just to name a few. A funny feature of the room is this small cabinet. The bathroom in the 1870s was outside. That is why such a structure is called an outhouse. As a child, and even as an adult, it was not safe or comfortable to use the outhouse at night. So they would use chamber pots like this one. A little cabinet like this hid these pots so not to offend anyone. Doing laundry for a long time required multiple tools and a lot of hard work. First, you want to get all set up. Here we have two buckets filled with water, our agitator, a giant spoon, a washboard, soap, a roller, and clothesline strung up. To start, shave soap into the wash bin. You can use the agitator to get the suds going. Grab your dirty clothes and put them in the soapy bin. Agitate the clothes. For a stain, you put soap directly on the stain and scrub it on the washboard. Use your big spoon once the clothes are good and agitated and put them into the rinse water. Give them a good stir. Wring out the clothes and hang them on the line. Just imagine how long the whole process would take for a family of six. Let's take a look into the creamery. When Zenas Sykes moved his family to Bernardo, he came as a crop farmer to primarily grow wheat and barley. Sadly, Zenas passed away in 1881, only after having farmed this land for 10 years. After his passing, Eliza could not maintain the wheat farm, so the family began to make butter to earn some money, and thus utilized this adobe building as the creamery. Notice the heavy construction, two roofs, thick walls, low to the ground, and small windows. This was done so to keep the building protected from the sun and to keep the dairy products cool inside. There was also a huge eucalyptus tree shading the building. Let's have a look inside. The dairy products stored here could have been used for drinking, cooking, and baking. One use of cream is making butter. You can try this at home too. Start with cream in a jar and then shake. There were lots of tools used to make butter like this one here that agitates from the inside. After around 10 minutes, butter is formed. That is a lot of work. Imagine the work for the Sykes family if they needed to fill a large stoneware crock with butter. Let's take a look at the gardens. The Sykes family and their neighbors were farmers. Since water in the area was very limited, they practiced dry farming. They developed the region into productive agricultural lands. Farmers were important as they were needed to feed the expanding urban population and provide markets for local businesses. Farmers in the region prospered largely as a result of grain cultivation. Grains could be planted quickly with little initial investment and offered a quick cash return at the end of the season. Blackberries, currants, strawberries, and grapes were other plants grown by the Sykes family. Also, in front of the home was an ornamental garden. Because of the probate records, we have detailed information about the plantings in this garden. The garden featured antique roses such as ladybanks, shrubs such as lilacs and begonia, and annuals such as pansies, sweet peas, and zinnias. Thank you, Watershed Explorers, for joining me today at the Sykes Adobe Historic Farmstead.